Well, good evening and welcome to Calvary Chapel, Green Valley, best place to be on a Wednesday night. And I don't know if it's the first day of spring for real or uh, we're just going to be teased again, but I sure like today. Today was really nice. A uh, couple of announcements I want to make you aware of. So you can take notes if you want to. You won't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, it, if we have a, a class called Firm Foundations that started already, but you can just still jump in. Uh, in Firm Foundations, you're taught the principles to study the tools and grow an increasing knowledge of His Word and walking in it. As always you say, knowing it's not everything, you got to learn how to apply it. So you can sign up at the website or one of the kiosks. Firm Foundation is going to be Tuesdays at 6.30, so don't want you to miss that. If you haven't heard about the Women's Spring Conference, let me be the first to tell you, we have a Women's Spring Conference coming up. That's going to be Saturday, April 27th, and here's a video about that now. Hi ladies. Hi, ladies. I want, I to, want personally to personally invite, invite you to, to a special event that we're having coming up on April 27th, Saturday. It is going to be an amazing event with Michelle Couchette, who is a big time speaker. I heard her originally on Focus on the Family, and she ministered to my heart and encouraged me. And I thought I would love to have her come to our church. And so, in a long shot, I just reached out to her and thought, not sure this is gonna happen, but turns out her mom lives here in the valley and so she would love to come and minister to the women at our church. So we scheduled her for March of 2020 and you know what happened in March of 2020. So here we are four years later and she is coming back out here. She is so excited to come and to share with you all those things that have helped her walk through difficulties in her own life. She is a survivor of three times battling cancer. She's gone through a lot of other difficulties as well. And so she's gonna share as one who has walked through those difficulties and gotten to the other side. So maybe you're walking through something right now. Maybe you have a friend or a loved one who's walking through something right now. At some point, we all know that we're all going to go through difficult times. And so these are going to be great tools for us to have. This is an event you do not want to miss. We're gonna start with breakfast in the courtyard. We're going to have our sessions throughout the day. We also have the Panera lunch option, if that's something that you're interested in. If you are getting the Panera lunch, it is uh, the last day to order that is April 15th. So that is coming up just in a few days. So you'll wanna get registered. And even if you're not doing the Panera Lunch, we want you to get registered right away so we can have all of the materials and all of the things that you will need for this conference. Please bring a friend. It is just gonna be an amazing day and I can't wait to share it with you. And so get registered and we'll see you there. God bless you. Well, I think everybody would want a faith that doesn't fail. Hi so, ladies. Uh, again, make I'll sure you sign up for that. Uh, again, Monday is the 15th, so as she says about the, you've got till Monday for the Panera Bread option. You've got till Monday to sign up for that. Now, a lot of times they record these sessions. At this point, they don't think they're going to be recording that, so this would be your chance to really hear uh, uh, Michelle share and what, uh, what she has to, to speak on that, okay? So uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is family camp. So now we're moving over to families. Uh, May 31st through June 2nd, our family camp uh, is on the books. Uh, it's going to be a time focused on building up one another in the family as well as, they put this here, a bunch of activities. So let your imagination roll with you. A bunch of activities. And there's going to be good food. I think it's going to be great food. I think they're underselling it. Great food. And uh, fabulous fellowship. That's really important. And so you can click on the family link, uh, family camp graphic in the foyer. We have the kiosks there. You can do that. You can pick up a card. It should have a, a registration uh, um, website address on that. Uh, to make a payment, uh, to, to get that going. But uh, finances and registrations are all due by May 5th. So they started out with a total of 37 rooms, and when those are gone, those are gone. So please sign up as soon as possible if you have an interest in that. Uh, the next baptism we have is going to be this Sunday, right after our third service, so we're super excited about that. That'll be in the courtyard. 
Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, you'll want to sign up in the kiosk ahead of time so that they can prep you, make sure you have all the information you need. Um, and so we're excited about that. And then if, for those of you who want to come see the baptisms, uh, come to third service or stay after uh, or show back up. It's just a great time for us to celebrate in these baptisms. We also have grief share and divorce care getting ready to start again, uh, beginning Tuesdays, April 16th at 6.30. Now, these two recovery support groups offer real help for deep hurts through a safe, compassionate community of believers. For more details, you can pick up a flyer in the foyer, or you could just sign up uh, on the kiosk, and somebody will get back to you on that. So do sign up for that, or share that information with somebody you know who might be struggling in those particular areas. And then, ladies, you've got a hike coming up on Saturday, April 20th. So they're going to go to Park Peak Loop in Sloan Canyon. So they ask that you meet at the church at 7 a.m., and then there'll be carpooling or caravanning. And if you want more details of what to dress or how to prepare for that, pick up a, a flyer on, uh, on the welcome wall when you go on your way out, and you'll have that information. You'll be really prepared. Our next marriage connection is going to be Sunday, April 21st at 6 p.m. We're continuing in the series Love Like You Mean It. And in this, we're looking at biblical love uh, that's virtuous and honest. So registration is not needed. Feel free to show up for that. And uh, with that, let's pray. Father God, we just ask, Lord, that you would just be present as we know you are. Just be present, Lord, in our worship, Lord. Just We want to be able to lift you up, Lord. And we want our worship team, Lord, to just be able to take us there, Lord. We want you to be able to... Uh, we would just like, Lord, for you to walk with us through this, Lord, as we come to you to worship you, to hear your word, Lord. And we just lift these things up to you, Lord. Tonight, midweek, some of us need that extra something to get us through the rest of the week, Lord, and so we're asking for that, Lord, and we just want to hear what you would have for us. So, Lord, let us give back in our worship and then hear what you have for us in your word. In Christ's name we pray, amen. One and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. How many of you, have, apart from Christ, have ever experienced love like that? I mean, only him, only him. And so thankful for his love. Would you join me tonight? Let's all stand. Let's reach out our hands to the Lord. And this is an amazing posture of surrender, just like this. Lord, I'm here, I'm yours, and I'm here to worship you. So let's, let's worship the Lord tonight.
There's no greater love than yours Tells the dead to sleep no more With just the sound the chains will break There is freedom in your name There is freedom in your name
what's your impossible your I need a miracle what's God you barely hang by a single thread what looks so hopeless now weighs down your heart with doubt you beg for a breakthrough but no sign of breakthrough yet when you cry and you cry till your tears run dry the answer won't come and you don't know why and you wonder
of your amazing love. How can it be that you, my King, would die for me? That's what real love is, Lord. We have that incredible example, Lord, your unconditional love. So, Lord, bless your word tonight. Carry us by your love, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. 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 Now, listen, are they having a seat, or are they welcoming everyone? Oh, you guys... Hey, uh, before you have a seat, introduce yourself. Find someone close by. Hey. How are you, brother? You threw me off. I didn't know. You wanted to... I think he's... I... Thanks.
Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday evening service at Calvary Chapel Green Valley. And what a joy it is always to spend time in the Word and as we just worship the Lord together as fellow saints. Um, we're going to be studying probably one of the most famous Psalms that people know. Um, it's been quoted, it's been put on walls, it's been nursery rhymes. And it's just a beautiful psalm of when we realize who the Lord is to us and who we are to Him. So let's read the psalm and lift up tonight's service to the Lord. So it's going to be Psalm 23. So if you guys want to open to Psalm 23, we're going to read verse 1 to 6. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the salt waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord Jesus, thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the psalm that we can know who you are to us, Lord. Please speak to us now through your word. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So many of you, as I've heard, probably can quote Psalm 23 by memory. Psalm 23 is probably the opening line, one of the most famous psalms that Christians and, believe it or not, even non-Christians can quote. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the Lord is my shepherd. It's been in nursery rhymes, on walls, you know those little plaques you get for your desk, the Lord is my shepherd. It's been all over the place. But do we really know what it means? You know, these are one of the, the psalms that, no, we know the psalm, but have you ever paused and studied and analyzed what it says? Who does the Lord say I am? You are. Who does the Lord say he is to us? Yes, he's my shepherd, but, but what does that mean? Yes, we're sheep. What does that mean? specifically for us. James Montgomery Boyce says this about Psalm 23. Millions of people have memorized the psalm, even those who have learned few other scripture, scripture portions. Ministers have used it to comfort people who are going through severe personal trials, suffering illness, or dying. For some, the words of the psalm have been the last they have uttered in their life. Henry Ward Beach says this about Psalm 23. It has charmed more griefs to rest than all the philosophy in the world. It has remanded to the dungeons more felon thoughts, more black doubts, more thieving sorrows than there are sands on the seashore. It has comforted the noble host of the poor. It has sung courage to the army of the disappointed. It has poured balm and consolation into the hearts of the sick, of captives in dungeons, of widows, in their pinching griefs, of orphans in their loneliness. Dying soldiers have died easy, easier as it was read to them. Ghastly hospitals have been eliminated. It has visited the prisoner and broke his chains. It has made the dying Christian freer than his master. It, has, it will go singing to your children and my children and to their children through all the generations of time. Nor will it fold its wings till the last pilgrim is safe. And time ended, and then it shall fly back to the bosom of God, whence it issued and sound on, mingled with all those sound of celestial joy, which make heaven's music forever. That's a beautiful way of describing Psalm 23. And you can also say this is the pearl of the Psalms, whose soft and radiant delights every eye. Charles Spurgeon. In this psalm, we will see that the Lord is our shepherd. What does that mean? He reveals himself to us in many different ways. When you study the scripture, yes, shepherd is one. 
but there's so many other ways that he reveals himself to us. Outside the word, he reveals himself to us in specific ways as well. Creation is one way the Lord reveals himself to the world. Romans 1 verse 20, it says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing about God. You can look outside of the beauty and the splendor. And the Lord is revealing himself through creation. There's no way for no one to say there's no creator. When you look outside, it's breathtakingly beautiful what the Lord has created. Yes, it's a fallen world, sin. But the beauty and the world declares who the Lord is. Somebody choose not to believe in the Lord. It's unfortunate that they cho choose that. Psalm 19 verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And the firmament shows his handiwork. The Bible says that God has also revealed himself to humans in our conscience. When he put his law on our hearts. Romans 2.14, even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. They demonstrate the, that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts. Either accuse them or tell them that they are doing right. This was written how many years ago? And we can see that even today. People say there's no God. He doesn't exist. But they obey the laws. They obey the laws, moral laws. They know what is right. They know what is wrong instinctively. But why is that? Because the Lord wrote his law on our hearts. Instinctively, we do know what is right. We do know what is wrong. We do know there's a creator. People just choose not to believe in that. Ultimately, it's their choice. Ultimately, one day, every knee will bow. Every mouth will confess that Jesus is Lord. What a glorious day that will be on the same side as well. What a tragic day that will be for so many people that choose now to completely disobey their good shepherd. <coughs> Let's pray for those people constantly. Pray for salvation for so many lost souls. We can also see in John 1.14, when Jesus, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Paul told the Colossians in Colossians 1.15, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. John, Jesus also said to Philip in John 14, verse 9, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Psalm 23, we see the Lord is our shepherd. That's how he shows himself to us as well. The Lord is our shepherd, our good shepherd. In John 10, 11, Jesus is known as the Good Shepherd. Hebrews 13, 20, Jesus is known as the Great Shepherd. 1 Peter 5, 4, Jesus is known as the Chief Shepherd. Do we see him like that a lot of times? That he's our shepherd, he leads us, we need to know his voice, we need to obey where he's guiding us. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, no, we don't. We don't always listen to the Lord, unfortunately. We listen to our own voices. We listen to people's opinions. We listen to our enemy's voice about specific things. But do we listen to our shepherd's voice that cares for us, that has his, our best intentions at heart? From what I could see, 
we are called sheep about 187 times in the Bible. So when you think of a sheep, what do you think of? Like a cute little cuddly cloud animal, you know? Sheep's pretty cute. Little lambs, oh my goodness, they're so cute. Little lambs. Growing up in, in South Africa, we had a lot of farmland and we saw a lot of sheep. Once they get old, they're not the prettiest animals, <laughs> to be honest with you. Lambs are cute, but sheep, like, yeah. <laughs> kind of weird looking. So, some fun facts about sheep, if you guys want to know some. So, God is using the analogy of a sheep in Psalm 23, and then nature perfectly describes how we also are a lot of times with the Lord. They have a tendency to wander off. Just like us. They have a tendency to go astray. Sounds kind of familiar. They have a tendency to get lost. They have a tendency to follow not their shepherd. <laughs> they are weak. <laughs> they don't have any natural defenses. They don't have claws. They don't have sharp teeth. And yes, it's been documented that sheep do have herd mentality that they will run off a cliff and they all will perish kind of like us in a lot of ways. You know, we wander, we have group mentality, we follow different voices, that's not our shepherd's voice, and we stray away. That's in our own nature as well. You can see that in Romans 7 and 5. We follow the lust of the flesh, flesh and eyes and pursuing the pride of life. Sheep, they basically helpless creatures. So when the Lord tells us, well, you're my sheep. Do you ever thought about that? Like, okay, Lord, you know, am I a tax sheep? You know, like Lambo kind of deal? <laughs> Put the bullets around yourself. No, no, you're a sheep. You know, that should be encouraging. But if you think about what sheep actually are, like, that's yeah, okay, Lord. Sure, we're sheep. <laughs> kind of dumb. Kind of selfish. Yes, we need a shepherd. They're totally dependent on their shepherd. I saw a picture of a sheep that didn't get uh, sheared for about a year. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. Kind of a mess. <laughs> so they need to be sheared, I believe, was it once a year or twice a year or something like that. So they're completely dependent on their shepherd and people to help them. That's exactly how we should be as well. We should be completely dependent on our shepherd. Sheep get frightened easily. They get confused easily. Hmm. They spy some green grass over here and they will go to the green grass. Just like us. Not being obedient. Rebellious, distracted, and so forth. So, like sheep... Humans, we're extremely gullible. When somebody comes with a new attractive message for us, some people have itchy ears. Instead of following what the Word says, some new preacher or new idea comes along and we have a tendency to follow the new green grass, the new revelation. Just focus on the Word of God. That's what we should do. We should study it for ourselves. We should understand it for ourselves. Research it by ourselves. So when something comes, we know what is true. We know what is not true. We shouldn't be like sheep. Psalm 23, David looked at the Lord, at the Lord as the shepherd who helped him. The shepherd who guided David. The shepherd who protected David. And the shepherd who also provided for David. So in verse 1 it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In the NLT, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. I don't need anything else. Psalm 34, verse 9 and 10, O fear the Lord, you saints, there is no one to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. 
Philippians 4, 11 to 13. Now that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere. And in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all three things through Christ who strengthens me. I shall not want means all my needs are supplied by the Lord. I don't need anything. He supplies everything that I need. I shall not want also means I decide to not desire more than what the Lord, my shepherd, gives me. Now I can extend that question to you guys. Are you truly content with what the Lord has given you? Or do you just want more? Are you content where you are at the moment? Spiritual-wise, that's a completely different issue. We always need to want to get closer to the Lord. With your spiritual drive, yes, I want to know more about Jesus. But my needs, do we, are we happy with what we have? Like truly content? Jesus wants you to be satisfied in Him right now in your current situation. Yes, we go through difficult times. We go through trials. We go through dark valleys. We go through mountaintops. But do we have joy? This past Sunday we learn about the fruit of the Spirit. It's love. First one is joy. Do we have joy? Not happiness. Do we have joy and contentment with what we have? How many times do we think we need something else? You know, I need a bigger car, bigger house, more money. You know, whatever the case may be, we just want more and more and more. We're a consumer-driven society. A couple of years ago, I went to a mission trip on Haiti, and one thing that really stood out was how content the people are. They, they don't have much. But one thing that stood out is they're content with what they have. They share everything that they have. Food, tools. It's no selfishness. Mine and yours. It's We share what we have. little side note. If you guys can ever go on a mission trip, please do. If you have that opportunity. It doesn't have to be overseas. Whatever the possibility of a mission trip is, just go on one. Because... A lot of times we go on a trip thinking that, you know, we're going to impact the people, but it's actually the opposite. You get impacted in such a way that you don't really know how you're going to be impacted. If you have doubts about that, speak to one of the people that went to the Philippines. And I'm sure they will give you stories about how the Lord impacted them or what they experienced impacted them. So if you guys can, just go. So have you ever meditated and thanked the Lord with what we have? The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I don't need anything else. So this is one of those chapters that you know we read. We know this chapter by heart. But sometimes we just have to slow down a little bit. You know, we, we study the Bible, but slow down and analyze and pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you and guide you in this. With the junior hires, that's what I, what I try to tell them. You know, slow down and study your Bible. Truly grasp what the Lord is trying to tell us here. Yes, we know the verses. We can quote it. But do we understand what it means? No, we have head knowledge a lot of times. We can quote so many scriptures. But do we have heart knowledge as well? You know, from our heads to our hearts. These 18 inches a lot of times take a lifetime. From your head, we know it. But for it to sink down into our hearts, it takes so long. We know these things. We know the Lord's our shepherd. We know we don't need anything else. But when it comes to the practical application of what we know, that 18 inches, how long is it taking us to apply to our lives? Keep on praying for that. Uh, 
You know, we do what the Bible says. The Lord is my shepherd. David knew this in a personal sense. He could say, my shepherd. It isn't that he just said the Lord is, you know, somebody else's shepherd, or the Lord is a shepherd, or the Lord is, you know, that guy's shepherd. No, he's mine. He's my shepherd. He guides me. He speaks to me. God's role as a shepherd is to love, to care. He protects us. The great King David felt the need to have a shepherd. The great King David needed a shepherd to be led. So if he thought he needs a shepherd, what does that mean to us? I need a shepherd. I need guidance. Let me ask you guys that. Do you think you need a shepherd? I hope so. I, we all do. For you to be able to need a shepherd, well, you have to see yourself again as a sheep. Only sheep need shepherds. Do you see yourself as foolish, dependent, stray, needing protection, following the still small voice of our Lord? We need a shepherd. Verse 2. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Sheep will not lie down when they're hungry, nor when they drink from a fast-flowing stream. Sheep, many times, they don't know what they need. Just like us, we think we know what we need. But they don't. They get spooked really quick, really easily. Just as sheep, our Lord knows what we need, and He takes care of us. For sheep to be able to lay, to lay down, they need to be at peace. No friction in the sheep community. Sheep, they're social animals. So, you know, when one sheep is troubling another sheep, there's friction. So they get a bit tense. They don't lay down. When they're hungry, troubled, how about us? Are you able to be led by the Lord to lay down? Did the Lord our shepherd dealt with your fears? Did he give you peace with all the frictions? Or is there anything going on in your life? Do you have any troubles that you're currently struggling with? Did you give that to the Lord? When we go to bed at night, are, are we anxious for things? Do we cast our burdens on the Lord? No, some, we think we can handle things all by ourselves. No, it's a one-man crew. Why are we carrying burdens that's not ours to carry? Matthew eleven twenty-eight and 30, to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why are we carrying burdens that is not ours to carry? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Do we not trust that the Lord can help us with this? Do we not trust that He's our good shepherd? That He wants to give us peace? Why are we not going to Him? Different reasons. You know, we can... <laughs> A lot of times we pretend to be pack donkeys. Now we just load ourselves up with all those burdens until we break our backs. And then what use are we? It's not our burdens to carry. Cast everything on the Lord. Psalm 55, 22, cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. 1 Peter 5, 7, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Give it to Jesus. Whatever you're struggling with today, difficult times we're going through, give it to Him. Lay it down at His feet. Just worship Him. Let Him cleanse you, clean you, pick you up, and encourage you. Philippians 4, 6, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. 
don't worry about anything. Let me ask you this again. Are you allowing the Lord to make you let down at green pastures? Or are we just carrying those burdens ourselves? The second part, it leads me to still water. Sometimes the shepherd, they will temporarily dam up the water to slow the stream down so the sheep can actually drink some water. But he must lead his sheep because you know, they cannot be driven to that. Instead, the sheep hears the voice of the, of the shepherd and they follow him. Just like us. Are we listening to our shepherd? Are we allowing him to lead us to the still waters? where he will take care of us. If a sheep wanders off, the shepherd will leave the flock, leave people in charge of that, and he will get the, the one that's lost. The shepherd need, knows what the sheep needs, the green pastures and also the water. This image is so rich with sense of comfort, care, and also rest. Do we have peace? And do we rest in the Lord and His goodness? Do we bask in the goodness of God and ask for that peace that only He can give us? Nothing else in this world can give us the peace that Jesus gives us. Nothing. Sometimes we try. We go from relationship to relationship. <coughs> That's not fulfilling. We switch jobs to jobs. That's not fulfilling. More money. Temporarily happy happiness. Nothing can fulfill us like Jesus can. So why don't we just come to Jesus to give us that peace? Verse 3, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Restores here means bring me back to repentance or a lost sheep is brought back. That reminded me of last night's prayer meeting where the main topic for the prayer meeting was the prodigals, praying for the lost sheep, praying for the prodigals to come back. Little side note, please join us for prayer on Tuesdays, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Beautiful time where we can just gather our saints and pray. Do we pray for the prodigals? Well, sometimes we just say, you know what? Whatever, dude, that's your choice. <laughs> you, you just go on your merry way. But do we really care for them and pray for them? Like what it says here, he restores me. Is there anything that we need restoration from? Allow your shepherd to restore you. What are you struggling with? Let him restore you. And people all around the world are crying out for direction. People look in weird places for direction. About 30 million Americans look to astrology, horoscopes, talk shows, fortune cookies. The other day I actually got a fortune cookie without a fortune. Kind of interesting. <laughs> Maybe that was the fortune. So I did a quick research, you know, Google. <laughs> if you call that research, I don't know. So I typed in astrology or horoscopes, and there were 880 million pages about astrology. That's kind of crazy. 880 million pages. So just on Monday, something interesting happened. Um, you know the eclipse on Monday? And it was kind of interesting because... We know the times are close for the Lord to come. However, um, we shouldn't read into things. You know, solar eclipses, they happen quite often. <laughs> they just tend to be that one happened here. But Monday, we didn't have any traffic on the way to school, which was pretty cool. <laughs> not a lot of traffic. On the way back, hey, not a lot of traffic also. The schools were closed. Kind of interesting that people look into heavenly signs for something instead of looking at Jesus the shepherd why are we looking at nonsensical things instead of looking at the living God but nothing happened so everybody went on the merry way again so many people are not led by the Lord 
but they're driven by culture. That's what drives their passion. The sheep didn't know what they need. They didn't know where the green pastures were. They didn't know where the still waters were. They just listened to the voice of their shepherd and they trusted him and they followed where the good shepherd led. David was saying he was being led by his shepherd. I'm going to read a short excerpt of, uh, well, this is a, a short poem. Um, it's called Time of the Mad Adam. This is the age of the half red page and the quick hash and the mad dash. The bright night with the nerves tight, the plane hop and the brief stop. The lamp tan in a short span, the big shot in a good spot, and the brain strain and the heart pain, and the cat naps till the spring snaps, and the fun is done. Kind of sounds like today, right? But do you know when this was written? From what I could see was in 1949, this was written. But how timely that is. So even in so long ago, Imagine how, no, how it is now for us. Just everything is so fast-paced. Do we have time to listen to the Lord? That small, still voice of Jesus. When you do your own personal devotional time, do you take a time just to be quiet to receive what the Lord has for you or listen to Him? Or is everything just so fast-paced, you know, just a checkbox? We need to slow down a little bit and listen to the Lord. Is the Bible just a crystal ball for us? Or do we do, you know, um, roulette, Bible reading, where you flip through your Bible and just read the first thing? Hey, it's the Word of God. It never comes back void. But why do we do that? Do we really have time to listen to the Lord? To seek his guidance for our lives. Do you know how to do you know how to discern between your own voice? The voice of the enemy? People's opinions? Or the Lord's voice? Do you know how to discern between those when you're praying about something? Well, the more time you spend with the Lord, you become sensitive to His guidance, to what He's teaching you and what He's showing you. Now, if something goes against the Bible, that is not the voice of the Lord at all. <laughs> if he, the voice tells you to do something sinful, that is not the Lord. He will not contradict His own word, never. But do we have enough time, quiet time, to listen to the Lord? Just like David said here, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. When we walk in the path of righteousness, there's obstacles, but the Lord can remove those obstacles. We trust his guidance. We know his voice and we obey the guidance. Can I know the will of the Lord for my life? It's not a big secret. I think Romans 12, 1 and 2 sums it up perfectly. I beseech you, brothers... Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Spend time with Jesus. He will show you. A couple of years down the line, you will prove that you're living out the Lord's will for your life. We need to learn to listen to our shepherd's voice so he can guide us. Verse 4. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So in verse 4, we move into a different tone in Psalm 23. We experience mountaintop experiences. But what do we do when we go down the valleys? When we go to camps with the youth, a lot of them experience what's called a mountaintop experience. You know, you've been separated for a couple of days, and you experience the Lord in a special way. Mountaintop experience. 
But from a mountaintop experience, guess what? You're going to have to go down to the valley. Once we go down to the valley, what's going to happen? How are we going to relate with the Lord? How will that affect you when you get back to the regular life, to the hustle and bustle of, of scheduled life? Or just is an emotional experience, or did the Lord really do something in our lives? Every Christian knows how it is to walk through dark times. We all go through difficult times. When you find yourself in a dark place, in a dark valley, this psalm should encourage you. Some of you know what it's like. A great darkness that may fall on you. Different situations. Different darknesses. We may feel desperately alone at those times. That's a great time for the enemy to come in and deceive and lie to us. It's like, you know what? The Lord left you. He deserted you. Just lies, what the enemy tells us. Don't listen to lies when we go through dark valleys. What does the psalm tell us? He's there with you. He's with us. When I walk through the valley of deep darkness, you are with me. God is with us in the darkness as much as in the light. Psalm 139, David asked this question, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? This question isn't, you know, oh, where can I run away from the Lord? That's not what David is saying when he asks this question. The psalm is full of love for the Lord and his wonder at all times and all that God has done. When David says, well, where should I go from your spirit? He's asking, is there any place that you're not at, Lord? Is there any place that I can hide from you, where I can escape you? No, he's everywhere. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. I will not be without you in heaven. If I make my bed in shawl, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the, in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. I will not be without you anywhere in this world, in the air, on the land, or the sea. Wherever I go, your presence is with me, and your strong hand will hold me. Then David says, If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for the darkness is as light with you. Psalm 139. God is with us in the darkness. Whatever we're going through, He's with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. How close are we to Jesus? When you find yourself in a great time of darkness, difficult times, maybe we don't feel the Lord's presence. But again, it's not about feelings. Do we have faith? And trust that He's there. Our feelings deceive ourselves. Don't trust our feelings when we go through these times. Trust Jesus. David also recognized that under the shepherd's leading, he may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's not his final destination. He's walking through the valley with the Lord next to him. Doesn't matter where the Lord leads us. We need to know that He's always with us. That's why we need to know His voice and we need to listen to Him when He tells us. When we go through difficult times, when we go through these valleys, we need to know what the Lord is telling us. Listen to His voice and His guidance to get us through that dark valley. Stick close to Him. As Christians... It's almost three options. Not three options, but three things we're going through. You're either in a trial, going out of a trial, or going into a trial. Hey, welcome to Christianity. <laughs> but when we go through a trial, have you ever paused and prayed? Okay, Lord, why am I going through this trial? 
what do you want to teach me during this trial? What needs to be cut out in my life? What thing am I holding on so tightly, Lord, that I'm going through this trial now? You just want to, me to let it go. When we go through a trial, pray, pause, ask the Lord, show me, Jesus, what do you want to teach me? Sometimes we go through trials because, remember, we're sheep and we make silly choices. Could be my own doing as well. But a lot of times, it's a refining process for us. What does Jesus want to refine in my life when I go through a difficult time? Even in a fearful place, the presence of the shepherd banishes the fear of evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So, so apparently some debate among com amongst commentators as to what David meant by this, by rod and staff. It could be one instrument using two ways. It could be two different instruments. So the Hebrew word for rod seems to imply a stick, which could be used for various applications. The Hebrew word for staff seems to speak about support in a sense of a walking stick. So whether it's one instrument, whether it's two instruments, they're used in different ways. So rod is for protection from danger. Staff is for guidance for the sheep. David saw both of these things as a comfort. So when we get the staff or the rod, do we see that as comfort when the Lord is correcting us? We should. See what David says. They both comfort me, Lord. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. So this is another transition that we see in the, in the psalm. So the danger, that's in the past. The darkness, in the past. So David comes back to the thought of tranquil, happy, joyous times in which the Lord has given him. So notice this is also in the present time. It's not past tense. It's not something the Lord did a long time ago. It's not even what the Lord does once in a while. It's what the Lord does for his people. You prepare a table for me. So God uses this picture to tell you that he will sustain you by giving you strength. Just as our body is strengthened by a good meal. But there's also something else here. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He has many adversaries or enemies, but they're powerless. They can't do anything to him. In war times, when a soldier wants to eat, it's probably they do it pretty quick. There's not a lot of time to prepare the meal and sit down and make a table. It's just chow down and you're out and you go. But what does the Lord says here? It speaks of a time of peace. Makes a table. Set the table. But the enemies can't do anything. Just as in time of peace. David's life, interesting life that David had. In his early years, he was a shepherd, hated by his brothers, despised by his older brothers. Then he lived as a fugitive, hunted by King Saul. When he became king, David inherited a divided kingdom when rival tribes were filled with uh, resentment and alienated by deep distrust. In later years, David also suffered as his family was torn apart by cycles of abuse, different reasons also, violence and death. At one point, he had to flee because one of his sons led a rebellion against him. So how in the world did David keep going? How will you keep going when all, everything seems impossible for us? When your enemies are knocking at your door, the Lord has set a table for you. He gives us peace. He comforts us. God prepared a table for David. He renewed David's strength, even in the presence of his enemies. And what the Lord did for David, he will do for you as well. He will make a table for you, a banquet where we can sit at. The Lord gives strength to His people. He sustains us in this world of trouble. You prepare a table for me 
in the presence of my enemies. You can say the downbeat version of Christianity boils down to this. Life stinks, but hey, heaven is coming. No, the Lord prepares a table for us. He will give us the joy. That's not what David is saying here. Here's a man who knew plenty of trouble in his life, and yet he says, my cup runs over with what I have. Here in this fallen world with all that we face and all everything that we suffer as well, even now my enemies are still present, even here in the dark valley, what does David say? My cup runs over. Can we say that? Quote the psalm. My cup runs over. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I go through dark times, but he's there with me. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, John 16, 33. But he also said, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full, John 15. David says, my cup runs over. What about you? Do we see our cups as running over from the Lord? Or half empty, quarter full? Does it run over? Last verse, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is always good. Mercy, faithfulness is the Hebrew word meaning love, mercy, loving, kindness, steadfast kindness. In the hospitality, this is the hospitality that God swears to his people. We are in a covenant with him. It is the Lord telling us this. The Lord gives us mercy, kindness to the people. When we live in wicked times, He gives us these things. Psalm 23, David is basically saying, Lord, you blow me away with your goodness and your kindness. I can't believe how you bless me, Lord. I truly am the blessed man on earth. Spurgeon said, why is that we write our sorrows in marble, but write our joys in the sand? But you can ask David, well, David, what when things go bad in life? What happens when we go through trials, dark times? David's joy, it wasn't focused on anything outward. It was from the inside, the joy the Lord gave him. He wasn't going on looking what was going on around him, inside, what was going inside. He wasn't focused on the trial. He wasn't focused on all the troubles we go through. He was focused on the truth about who the Lord says he is, the good shepherd. We can pause and just think, no, how good has the Lord been to us? He blesses us, blesses us with existence with life, family, spiritually, identity, who he says we are. Ultimately, he blessed us with eternal life with him. God is always good during this life. In his shepherd, David found what the Lord is to him. He's my good shepherd. Philippians one twenty one. Paul writes, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Do we see life like that? God's goodness during this life is so good to us. But what a glorious day that's going to be once we step into eternity to spend time with Jesus. I hope this is not a selfish saying. (laughs) If it is, I apologize, Lord. But I want to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, when we go to heaven. I don't know if it's selfish, but I really want to hear those words. You know, what do we do here to please the Lord? Do I live my life as a sacrificial offering to Jesus? Or do I live it for myself? Life is so short. Why waste time? Do we trust that the Lord is our good shepherd? 
do we know when he speaks to us, when he leads us, when he guides us? Do we know how to distinguish between those? Do we trust the Lord in dark valleys when he leads us through that? Do we trust him? What a beautiful shepherd we have in Jesus. I'm going to close with this hymn entitled The Good Shepherd. My Savior, the good shepherd is. He'll never leave the flock. The one who truly loves the sheep became the Lamb of God. Despised, afflicted in my stead, he spent his soul for me. And to the slaughter he was led, that I not thirsty no that I not thirsty be. The shepherd is the Lamb of God. He calls to me each day to drink the waters flowing free from his pure side of grace. Yet when I stray or choose my way, he still would search for me and bring me home on shoulders strong. Do I not his love see? My shepherd's face is how I live. I love to look at him. Though he might lead through shooting trial, but still I follow him, just as the Father's presence cheered him through his suffering day. Just one I saw his tender care, that here I want to stay. O oh, Father, thank you for your Son. He shares your heart f for us, that gladly he would bear to us the bosom of your love. No greater shepherd could there be, that he would not lose one. And lead us all to dwell with you, sweet pasture, living stream. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you for the psalm. Thank you for being our good shepherd. I just want to pray for us now, Lord, to listen to your still small voice as you lead us, Lord. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter what we go through, Lord. You're always there with us. You're always with us in the dark valleys, Lord. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Nellis. So, Pastor Nellis, he leads our junior high ministry. And uh, thank you for coming and sharing the word here this evening. Uh, Psalm 23. I, I could study that a thousand times. There isn't a single time that I look into that psalm that I am not just completely undone by the goodness and the grace of God's care and his love and the way that uh, Jesus is such a good shepherd. And whether we're on the mountaintop and just going through the best of times or whether we are walking through that, that shadow of that valley and I the Lord is with us and he will comfort us and bring us to the other side. And so thank you for that uh, great encouragement tonight. All right. want to just uh, remind us uh, this weekend we are going to be finishing up the book of Galatians, last chapter. And so what a powerful chapter that is. So want to invite you to go ahead, read over it yourself, and then we will see what the Lord has uh, for us here as well. Ladies, the ladies conference coming up. And so uh, please get yourself signed up. You can do it on your app, on the website on the kiosks, uh, uh, any way that you want, just uh, please get yourselves uh, signed up. Family camp also, if the Lord's stirring you, up at Twin Peaks, the facility up there is just unbelievable. The game room, the pool, the volleyball, the hiking, the family time, the campfire and s'mores and uh, and the whole weekend that is uh, set up truly it is going to be uh, a blessed time so if you're praying about that uh, continue to see what the lord has to say if you want to accept the lord if you have never done that and you want to do that tonight is the night you can come up after service and we can take care of that as well and if you want to pray if you need prayer tonight uh, come up and, and join us uh, as well may god bless you may you continue to walk close to the shepherd and listen for the voice uh, of the shepherd. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. peace. Let's stand to close, everybody.
the joy of the Lord be your strength tonight. God bless. Drive safe.